Let's throw down. What do you say? Another top 10 showdown for you. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay. And you've come just in time. Michigan has deferred. Wisconsin will receive. And the ball will be spotted out at the 25-yard line. Perfect Wisconsin, perfect Michigan. And we welcome you to ESPN on ABC College Football presented by Walmart. First time since 1947 that Michigan and Wisconsin meet while both are ranked in the AP Top 10. And Wisconsin opening up with the football. We'll say hi to their quarterback, Alex Hornibrook. The redshirt freshman quarterback got his first career start at Michigan State, second career start at Michigan. How do you like me now? We'll find out. First down and 10 from the 25. Corey Clement is the single setback behind Hornibrook. And Clement is the ball carrier, maybe a gain of one against this stingy Michigan defense. We found out a lot about Alex Hornibrook last week in East Lansing, especially on third down. He was outstanding in clutch situations. See his numbers. He was a big part of the reason why they won on the road. Now he comes into another hostile environment. You gotta believe that the nerves are going through Hornibrook early in this game. Second down and nine. The fullback in there. Give it off to Clement. Ben Gideon makes the stop. Middle linebacker for Michigan. It's gonna be interesting to see these two teams very similar, Steve. Strong defenses, traditional powers running the football, but haven't been as consistent running the ball, either one of them. And you see Wisconsin hasn't had that ability to just push them off the football. The quarterbacks are going to be a big piece of the game today. Yeah, and, and what's happening is for Wisconsin, a lot of third and longs. Hornerbrook was great last week, but can he do it again against a Michigan defense that's outstanding on third and long? Nine of 13 on third down a week ago. First big spot of the game on third and seven. Throws and completes. Able to hit Robert Wheelwright across midfield. Clutch pass and catch for Gata 24. And a huge pickup by the running back, Ogumbawale. You see him right on Peppers. They love to insert Peppers in the rush. He stands in there much like he did on the first third down last week in East Lansing when Malik McDowell was crushing down on him. Does the same to start this football game. Standing right behind him. Great vision and feel for where he had to throw the ball to throw his receiver open. And you know Don Brown is bringing pressure on anything third and three longer like third and seven that was. Right back to the run game. They want to stay out of that third and long obviously and Clement picks up a couple there. Wisconsin in their upsets of LSU and Michigan State the first quarter has been critical you see the dominance there 50 minutes of time of possession to nine you see the yardage differential 50 more plays that is crazy and you see the points that it adds up to outscoring the opponents 22 to three second and seven out cross midfield Hornibrook the throw Quick out to the flat to Dare Ogumbawale, able to turn the corner and has the first down. Ogumbawale is going to be more of a factor in this Wisconsin offense. He's the man that took over for Corey Clement when he was injured a year ago. Clement is now back healthy, but they can't keep 23 off the field. He's too good, as we saw in pass protection and third downs catching the football to be on the sideline. Hey, they spotted him just short of the first down. So let's call it third and inches. Clemens back in there. Alec Ingold is the fullback in front of him. That's Troy Fumagalli. They set in motion. Give it to Ingold, the fullback, and he does have it on the quick hitter. Has the first down, and the football come out. Michigan says they have it. Let's see. Peppers came out of the stack with the football. Ingold looked to have the first down was down on the ground. The question is, did the ball come out, obviously, before his knee went down? It looks like that knee was down. So hard to get in that scrum. Again, the call on the field was a fumble. And the knee's down. And they're going to take another look at this. 
That was close. Field is a fumble recovered by the defense. The play is under further review. Not only the knee, but it looked like his elbow was down, and we know that the ground can't force that fumble, so. Bill Lemonnier is with us, Big Ten referee for some 20 years. He's in the broadcast booth with us along for the ride. Brian, I think he hit it right on the head. We've got a knee down, we've got an elbow down. The ball came out after. Replay should be reversing this, giving the ball back to Wisconsin. Then the spot will be critical for where right. they have the spot. If you could avoid Bill going going forward, anything other than Brian, you've got that exactly right. That would be helpful for the rest of us. He, you know, he was in Seattle last night calling, <laughs> doing the stand for Washington. He's been yeah. on a red eye. He's right. only had four hours of sleep. We'll take what we can get All from right. him. <laughs> we thought the spot was good. We thought it was a first down yardage. Let's we'll see where they mark it. Well, this might take a while because they got to deal with both of those issues. One, right. you know, this not being a fumble, and two, they got to look at it from the side as to where that ball should be spotted. I got to say this, even if he's spotted short, with the way that Paul Christ has been operating in the first month of the season, there's a high likelihood he would go for it even if they don't get it. Remember, they have kicking issues as well, Wisconsin. Rafael Gaglianoni is not with the team, out for the season, back surgery. They're super clutch kicker. Well, they're out of field goal range anyway, but that certainly goes into the mindset as to whether to go for it. That's Andrew Endicott. On the right. That's going to be a big factor in this game. You know, two very evenly matched teams defensively with new quarterbacks. After further review, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball coming out. It is first down and 10 at the 37 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 11 minutes, 55 seconds. Thank you. All right, so Greece, that already puts you ahead of Melrose. <laughs> in this last week, you're correct. Tom Fiedler is our replay official. Referee is Ron Snodgrass. So Wisconsin will keep the football. Ingold can can breathe a little easier. The fullback, and they spot it first down and ten for Wisconsin. It's the area of the field where Paul Christ loves to take a shot. This kind of red zone fringe, 35 yard line. Jazz Peavy's been their go-to guy. He was a week ago. He burned. Michigan State on numerous occasions. Austin Ramish replaces Ingold as the fullback. Handed off to Ramish. Maybe has a yard or two. You get the feeling that Paul Christ has heard enough about their inability to run the football consistently. You know, two years ago they ran the ball for 6.9 yards per carry. Now he wasn't here. Last year, only 3.8 yards. He wants to establish that identity. That's who he is. He's got some players up front that are young, four sophomores on this offensive line, and a first-time starter at left tackle. He's obviously trying to establish the line of scrimmage early. Second and eight. Out of the gun. Flag flies to see if somebody jumped. Could be Jacob Maxwell. Full start. Offense, number 52. Five yard penalty, remains second down. That's Maxwell, one of those youngsters on the offensive line. Yeah, and Maxwell's been developing at that position. Uh, they, they've had an injury up front to John Dietzen. Brett Connors, the center, made his first start a week ago against Malik McDowell in that defensive line for Michigan State. One of their best players, a left tackle, 65 Ramchak. Be a great matchup to watch he on Taco Charlton and Chris Warner. And he was the transfer from Division Three school. Second and 13 after they pick up the flag. Ogunbo Wale trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Another long third down. We saw the approach from Alex Hornibrook. On that first third and long, they converted with a great pickup by Ogunbo Wale. But uh, as we talked with Paul Chris last night, you cannot be in these situations. You can't expect to have that same kind of production on third down, especially when this Michigan defense leads the college football on third downs. On third and 10 or more last week, Hornibrook was six for six for 100 yards against that Michigan State defense. Here's third and 10. Looking right and throwing right. And it is knocked away. 
George Rushing was the intended target. Channing Stribling, outstanding man-on-man -man coverage. Nice change up from Don Brown, defensive coordinator for Michigan. They were expecting man-to-man -man coverage. They got man coverage underneath, but a safety over the top. Stribling in great position. He's got so much length, it's difficult to throw the ball over. He had to get, get the ball out quickly there, put it up, and won his receiver to go make a play. He wasn't able to. Not a bad shot, though. Anthony Lottie, the true freshman, is set to punt. And waiting for it is Jabril Peppers. You see if Peppers even gets an opportunity, and he won't. It'll be down back at the 10-yard line. Michigan. We're throwing down on this Saturday afternoon. Michigan has the football for the first time today. And that's the quarterback, Wilton Spate. He's going to throw on first down or try to throw. Shakes off an offender. Is brought down finally. Zach Bond got to him. Yeah, Vince Beagle not going to play in this game. He's injured. His replacement is right here, Dooley. He doesn't even get blocked. There's a miscommunication there up front. Misses him. Spate does a nice job of not get, giving up the sack and at least getting two yards. It's a big loss for Wisconsin defensively. Beagles, their senior captain, their best player on this defensive front seven. Dooley has a big job to replace him. He's kind of their heartbeat, too. Emotional leader as well. Throwing and completing. Spate able to connect, and it's wide open to his tight end, Jake Buck. Who else? They're going to attack Dooley. Right off the bat, they know that he's new to this system, so they release Jake Butt, their best receiver. And you ask in the 3-4 system, these outside linebackers to drop in coverage. That's one of the things you're asked to do. And Dooley at 6'3", 250 pounds, not quite as fast as Vince Beagle. Got a good look into the eyes of Henry Poggi, the fullback. But Spates throwing again on first down. Able to complete. To J.U. Chesson brought down after the short gain of six yards on the play. Take a look at today's right combination, which is brought to you by State Farm. Well, and this is a big opportunity for Wilton Spate. You know, the competition level has not been the toughest for Michigan so far. Last week, Penn State without their three linebackers. Jake Butt's a big key in this game because if he gets to the second level, the safeties for Wisconsin are not as big. Davion Smith, the ball carrier, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Bring up a third and four, Todd. And Smith is part of the reason I think that Wilton Spate continues to progress as a, a quarterback inside the pocket. He's gaining more confidence each week. Smith, one of the better pass blocking uh, running backs in the country. See, play after play, even on that connection with Jake Butt just a few plays ago, he was the guy that got in position, picked up the outside blitz, and Spate has learned to really trust his backs in protection. Third and three. And Poggi in motion, top of your screen. Here's Spate, looking left, now down the middle, had great protection, throwing, and it is knocked away. Excellent coverage on the play by Dakota Dixon there. Ball hung up just a little too long. Yeah, the ball was thrown a little bit late, and if this ball is thrown outside the numbers, Steve, it's a completion. But if it's inside the numbers, it gives Dakota Dixon a chance to recover. That's the details. Right of that position, throwing the ball to that spot four yards from the sideline and letting Darbo adjust to it would have been a conversion. Kenny Allen is back to punt. And he'll boot it away. Jazz Peavy, that's a heck of a punt. Peavy from his own two. Reversing field. Get down to the eight yard line. What a punt from Kenny Allen. 55 yards on the punt. There is Jabril Peppers. They only have one number five on defense, but you might see him in a lot of different places. Wisconsin lost 53 yards on the exchange of punts so far. And so Alex Horderbrook and the Badgers will open up from the nine yard line on their second possession. Hand off to Clement. Try on the outside. Has a first down and more still on his feet and is pushed out just prior 
to the 30-yard line. And that's exactly what Wisconsin wants to do is run the football, but that'll be tough against Peppers, who does everything well. Well, there's no question, but the thing I'm excited to see from Jabril Peppers, we know about the punt returns, interceptions, tackles for losses, and all the Heisman talk, right? He's the Sam linebacker now, new this year for Michigan. And to go up against this offensive line, average 315 pounds, how is he going to hold up against a power run attack? Because you know they want to take it right at him. They're coming at Peppers for sure. Hope they get into a four-quarter football game and there's some wear and tear there. Clement, the ball carrier, gain of one. Ryan Glasgow made the stop. Cassidy, thank you. All afternoon, she'll keep you posted on what's going on in and around the world of college football on this throwdown weekend. Top ten showdowns everywhere you look. Agunba Wale. Maybe a yard and then some late contact there. That's what Jabril Peppers coming in late. He is not afraid. He does not care how big this offensive line, how big these backs are. Everybody's been telling him, hey, be careful. You go in there and play linebacker. But he is not scared of anyone. It's going to be fascinating to watch him in this match. Look how small he is compared to that offensive line. You can't hardly see him. Peppers. Nine and a half tackles for loss. That's tied for the lead across the country. Here's third and seven. Hornerbrook to throw. Steps up and throws. Able to complete, but it'll be short of the first down. Troy Fumagalli, one of his favorite targets, the tight end. And Delano Hill brought him down shy of the marker. We were talking with Don Brown, their defensive coordinator, about how he's going to approach this Paul Christ offense on third down. He said, if it's third and three plus, I'm sending the house. I am not waiting with a treasure freshman quarterback. That time he sent six guys, and Delano Hill made a great play. Lottie's second punt of the afternoon. Peppers will let it bounce. We'll Rolled out to the 23 yard line. Four and a half to play here in the first half of the 40 yard punt. We remain scoreless. Man. Paul Chris, you know, he's very unassuming uh, externally, but one of the most competitive people you will ever meet internally, and couldn't be prouder of his team and the way they've responded with two huge wins so far this year. Opened against LSU, surprised a lot of people there. That was at Lambeau Field. Here's Spate throwing and completing the Chesson, and he's crashed down in a big way by Derek Tyndall. And I don't think that... Paul Chris could be prouder of this defense and what they've done. You know, they, everybody had questions about Dave Miranda leaving last year. They were number one scoring defense a year ago in college football, and then they lose three out of four of their secondary players. They lose Joe Schobert on the outside, and all they've done under Justin Wilcox, the new defensive coordinator, is be even better than they were a year ago. Chris Evans, first handoff. He's the speed back, and he looks to break it. He's across midfield. Welcome to the football game today, Chris Evans, the freshman from Indianapolis. And a big question for this Michigan offense, can they run the ball between the tackles against a physical front seven? They did it last week against Penn State, but Penn State is nowhere near Wisconsin. Really nice change of pace to have Evans with the burst that he brings. He obviously, and Smith have a power back. Plus, don't be surprised if we see both Evans and Smith in the field at the same time. Evans can work out in the slot as a receiver. Very good pass catcher. Rush of 22 yards on that play. And sure, why not give it back to him? There's Evans. And that time he is brought down by Connor Sheehan Chris Evans was the ball carrier. after the short game. Brought it's been an interesting Connor approach Sheehan. from Jim Harbaugh with his running back so far this year. He knows that Davion Smith is his bell cow. But then he sprinkled in four other guys. We've seen Chris Evans. We've seen Ty Isaac. Last week we saw Karan Hickton. He's trying to keep his guys fresh for the remainder of this season. I think it's a good approach. And it works twofold, right? You keep them fresh, and you keep them hungry, too. And and they get experience. You know, Chris Evans, as a true freshman, has got great experience so far this, this uh, month. Ty Isaac, you mentioned him, Greece. He's in the backfield right now. And a timeout is called. Timeout, Michigan, their first. This will be a 30-second timeout. Welcome back to Ann Arbor. You see, last week we talked about the success Michigan had on the ground, the diversity of production. Davion Smith led with over 100 yards, but look at the rest of these guys, Higgins, Isaac, and Evans. Now, I understand Penn State was not anywhere near what Wisconsin is in their front seven. They had injuries, 
So a good start early for this running game for Michigan. You see Evans back in there now after sitting out of play. Second and ten midfield. Spate to throw. Perfect. Able to hook up with Amara Darbo for his first catch. You get the running game going, then the passing game gain of 12. Well, and you have to have balance against a team like Wisconsin. You can't just try to run the ball on first and 10 or second and 10. Spate is going to have to make these kinds of good decisions and accurate throws all game. And he told us it was very important to get some of these throws over the middle, some of these routes connected early on against that cover three, because there's five, usually four or five defenders under in coverage. Spate under pressure. Able to dump it off for Chris Evans. T.J. Edwards brings him down. And another first down throw, right? Another first down throw. Jim Harbaugh understands he's got to get his quarterback in rhythm against a good defense. He's got to keep the tempo right, and they've got to make good decisions. And Wilton Spate, get this, outside of the first pass of the year, which was an interception, yes. he hasn't thrown an interception since. That same game, that first opening game, after the interception, they scored seven touchdowns on seven consecutive possessions. Three in the backfield. Give it to Davion Smith, the last man through. He has the first down on second and one. And all the jitters go, I'm just going to play the game. The coach got my back, and you see the production from that. 119 passes since then without interception. They get the first down, and now from the 25, off the play fake. Spade wants it. Oh, nearly intercepted. Looking for Chesson on the play, and it was broken up nicely by Leo Musso. Uh, Leo Musso, watching him the last four games, I've become a big fan. I mean, he says he's 5'10". I think he's closer to 5'7", but he's smart as can be. Chesson has 6'3", has the advantage from a height standpoint, but Musso has the closing speed and the smarts, and he's been a big addition for this Wisconsin defense. I stood next to him right, right before the game. I'm, I'm guessing 5'6". <laughs> how, how tall are you again, McShay? Six, uh, pushing 6'1". Six is that what we're going with, 6-1? 6, six, six, oh, six, six I think he's using the same tape that Musso did. Chesson has the first down there, another completion for Spate. Make him 6 of 8 now. You've seen them throw the ball with a lot of efficiency on first and second down. Now you get inside the red zone. This is where, as a quarterback in Wilton Spate, you need to continue to grow. You need to continue to protect the football, but down here, you really need a running game. That's where this Michigan offense can continue to improve. Michigan's been terrific, as you see, in the red zone. Keep in mind, Wisconsin has allowed just three offensive touchdowns all season. Hand it off to Chesson in the final half minute of the quarter. Gain of eight on the play, and Chesson might be shaken up. Looks like he's going to be OK. It's going to be a low scoring game, right, with these two teams. So these red zone opportunities for both teams are so critical. They sure it's going to be low scoring, right? Because Mich Michigan has scored at least 45, at least 45 in every single game this season here. But they have not faced a defense to no. quality Wisconsin, no. No with or here. without Beagle. Look at this formation. Oh, yeah. What do you call this, Grease? That's the train. Who didn't know that? Now on second and two, <laughs> hand it off. Damian Smith trying to push towards the goal line. The helmet's in the end zone. I do not believe the football is. That's Devin Asiasi who lost his helmet on the exchange. They're going to say he was down at the one and zeros on the clock as well. You know, you talk about Jim Harbaugh making it fun. The Wisconsin defense, they've allowed just three offensive touchdowns this season. Only one rushing touchdown. Davion Smith and Khalid Hill in the backfield. Hill is their touchdown maker. Gets there for the score. Fifth touchdown of the season, Khalid Hill. Michigan on the board. Yeah, Khalid Hill has been their sledgehammer inside the two-yard line. Take a look at this exchange. Held on to it. That's a great job by Wilt Spade. He almost gave the ball to him with one hand and ushered him into the the path there with the other hand trying to push him in. Such a powerful guy, Khalid Hill. 
and so versatile. You know, last week against Penn State, made a couple of big third down catches, really athletic catches on poorly thrown balls. He's great in protection, and you see the power he can run with in short yardage. Got a good look from our pylon cam brought to you by Progressive. This has the feel of a Big Ten kind of day, doesn't it? The weather, the teams, the records. Two top ten teams here. Michigan scoring on the first play of quarter number two. And what a drive that was for the Wolverines. They did not need a third down play on that drive. Wow. Thought it had a lot to do with, with Wilton Spate throwing the football. You mentioned four or five on the drive. And most of those were on first down. And that's the way you loosen up a great defense is you have balance. You don't just turn around and think you're going to run the ball on first and ten six times and get a touchdown. That's a good Mowale at the goal line trying to make something happen. He is brought down. Wisconsin starting at their own 19 on first and 10. Give it to Corey Clement. Gain of three on the play. Proverbial boss, but I believe am I quoting you accurately on that? Here's Hornerbrook under some pressure, and that will not go for a catch. Trying to hook up a Jazz PB was underthrown. Mo Hurst on the stop. Well, much like the problem for Stanford last night was a serious pass rush from University of Washington. Right there, pressure from Mo Hurst, very similar. Getting pressure with your front four. Mo Hurst has been a beast the last two weeks. He didn't play early in the year, coming back from injury. But they have three, four of these nose tacklers. They can rotate in with Hurst, Monet, Glasgow. Tremendous talent up front for Michigan. Hurst was ringing the bell there. Third and six. Borderbrook throwing. And just a bit too far. Try to find Peavy again. And Peavy is looking around for a flag. All he saw was stribbling on the coverage. And they're having stripling. to get the Go ahead, Todd. I was just going to say, they're having to get the ball up so quickly. Hornerbrook feels the pressure coming, knows it's coming. So those throws, you'd like to take another second for it to develop. He's trying to get it out quickly, and the, the timing just isn't there. Peavy wanted a pass interference. Stripling had his right hand on his shoulder. But as long as you look back for the football, you're going to get the benefit of the downs. Well, well played. Anthony Lottie, been a little too busy as far as Wisconsin is concerned. Here's Peppers from the 40. And he is knocked back to the 42-yard line by T.J. Watt. 7-0 Michigan early stages of this second quarter. And Jake Butt is rather popular here in Ann Arbor. Gene Wojciechowski did a terrific piece awesome. this morning on game day. But to hear, to hear Gene say the most famous butt since a Kard Kardashian, <laughs> I thought that was, I mean, that was right there. My favorite was his dad, you know, head Yes, butt. yes. That was my favorite. And of course, he is the leading receiver for this Michigan squad. Davion Smith goes in motion. That ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Chikwe Obasi able to knock it down for great, this Wisconsin defense. Great pronunciation there. Chikwe Obasi. You know, you got you teach your defense alignment. If they're going to be throwing the ball quick on first down especially, you're not going to be able to get to the quarterback. So read his eyes and then get your hands up. It was perfectly executed by Obasi. Brings up a second down 10. Haven't mentioned T.J. Watt's name other than really that special teams play. And again, with no Vince Beagle, they need some big plays on this defense to keep it close on second down and 10. Here's Spate to throw. Able to connect to Grant Perry running room down the sideline before Jack Sitchi forced him out. Wisconsin decided to bring some pressure and it was well diagnosed from Michigan. You're going to see the pressure come from the outside between the offensive line and Davion Smith. They pick it up. Great pocket to throw from. That's as good as it gets. Give some credit to Tim Drevno, their offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. This is a tough defense to prepare for from a protection standpoint to identify where all these linebackers and secondary players are going to come from and get it picked up for a nice pocket. Perry is the fifth different receiver to catch a ball today. Hand off to Smith off the pitch a big part. Cut it inside. He's inside the 30 yard line. And this is the balance of the Michigan offense. So Shabady replaces him. And we're back with a second and three. Hand off to Ty Isaac. And he has enough for the first down. On second and short. Interesting to see how 
Michigan losing one of their better run blockers in Newsom. Now with Bushel Beatty at left tackle, can they continue to establish that line of scrimmage and run the football the way they want? A little Wildcat here with Peppers. Jabril Peppers seeing some offense. Carried the football twice this season. And Spate was the decoy that time. Dakota Dixon made the stop on Davion Smith. Great technique on that handoff. <laughs> He's a decoy. You see him sprint to the sideline, whether he has the ball or not. I think as a defender, you flinch and say, gosh, does you second guess yourself? Does he have it or not? Now, the Peppers has been clamoring for more time on offense. And again, Wilson Spate, he split out the top of your screen, the quarterback. Peppers again hands off to Davion Smith. Short of the first down. I, I smell a setup here. <laughs> the next one, they're throwing a spade for sure. You know, I, they won't let Peppers call the cadence, so you know that. They, they have him clapping. Every every guy dreams of playing quarterback, and they probably a lot of them play quarterback in high school, and Peppers is no different. They want to get up there and they want to bark out the signals, make audibles. They say, no, you can take a snap, but you're going to clap your hands. It is amazing. You read every single bio on all these. They've all played quarterback. Even the 300 pound guys are all high school quarterbacks. It's amazing. First man through is Khalid Hill. Did he get there? They're going to say yes. They're signaling for the first down to move the chains on third and one. Hill is their goal line offense. Scored his fifth touchdown of the season. It's the only touchdown of the day today. And the reason Michigan has the 7 0 lead. Well, you see Peppers right there behind uh, Jim Harbaugh. We were talking with him last night. He said, you know, Last week when I wanted to get Pep in the game, I didn't have to yell for him. I just say Pep. He was right <laughs> behind me. He was almost in my That's hip great. pocket. There he is right there. He is ready to get in the game at all times. I thought he was clamoring to get back. He was laughing on the sideline as well. <laughs> First and ten now. Two tight ends off the play fake. Here's Spade. What a pocket he has to work with. And then overthrows his intended target, Grant Perry. Before today, Wisconsin's biggest deficit was just four points last week against Georgia State. So, or a couple of weeks ago against Georgia State. Right. So, being down by seven here is the most adversity they've faced. Well, and obviously, they're trying to prevent another touchdown here, force a field goal attempt. They don't give up many points up there in Madison. Handoff Smith. Good second effort there to crash ahead for a yard or two. And that's the defense that we have seen so far this year from Wisconsin. T.J. Watt sets the edge so well. Such a physical presence. You know, this is his first year really playing this position full time. He was a tight end just like his brother coming to Wisconsin. He had two knee surgeries, two knee injuries. And they said, you know, he said, I didn't want to play tight end because I was worried about people falling on the back of my legs all the time. And he's fallen in love with the defensive mindset. Third and seven. Look like a busted play. Spade got away and throws and in and out of the hands of Grant Perry. And that probably should have been intercepted by Lubin Figaro. Wow, you want to talk about why Wisconsin has won games early against top 10 opponents? It's because they've made these plays. Figaro had a chance to intercept this ball and take it 100 yards the other way, and it goes right through his hands. Dixon misses Spate, does a nice job to avoid him, but a mistake that he got away with. Kenny Allen is on for a 31 yard field goal attempt, and he missed it. Not even close. Kenny Allen, no good from 31. He missed two or three against Penn State. And again, this is clearly a confidence issue for Kenny Allen. Should have been an easy chip shot. Just pushed it. And that keeps the score 7-0. Makes him feel a little bit better dropping the interception. Could have been tied though instead. As you said, 99 the well, other way. Well, Musso, right? Musso had the big fumble recovery last week against Michigan State. 66 yards. Yeah, they've scored on defense. You know, they've got nine turnovers this year, and they've got 27 points 
off those turnovers against those two top 10 teams, LSU and Michigan State. And that's a missed opportunity for Paul Chris. All right, so after the missed 31 yard field goal, here's Wisconsin with the ball. Off the play fake. Alex Hornibrook comes out throwing. And it is dropped. Had Jazz Peavy, it looked like. Jordan Lewis saw the coverage there. First mention of Lewis today. And this is the third time they've tried to throw the ball down the field to Jazz Peavy. This ball was underthrown, Steve. If this ball is thrown out in front of Peavy, he has the speed to go get it. I think because of the fact that Hornybrook has overthrown him twice already in this game, and Lewis kind of underthrew it. Great job there by Lewis, the corner with his right hand at the very end of the play. He got his head around in time. And that allowed him the opportunity to get his hand in there and break it up. Second and ten. So Wisconsin has shown they will take a shot. Try to loosen up this Michigan defense because that's not going to get it done. Corey Clement is stopped by everyone on that Michigan defense. Cassidy. said getting Taco Charlton back healthy last week changed his entire defense. He and Glasgow get to the quarterback. He's such a physical presence. Glasgow with back-to-back -back plays, Steve. He blew up the run play on second down, and then he shows you his versatility as a pass rusher on third down, one of the better players in the Big Ten. Glasgow's having himself a weekend. Yesterday was his birthday. Makes the big play there. Second straight three and out for Wisconsin. Peppers on his side of the 50 on the punt return lowers his helmet and Michigan will start inside the 38 yard line. I just don't get it. Why would you ever put punt to Peppers in the middle of the field. That's twice now that they've done that. They're, they're lucky that he didn't break it for a longer return. You know you wonder Todd uh, you got to think that Paul Chris has had a sit down conversation with his punter. But he's he's to have true, another one then. He's a true freshman, <laughs> yeah, right? He's a true freshman. So, you know, does he have the experience on a big stage when you tell him, listen, kick the ball outside the numbers? Does he does he have the control to do that? I wonder. The leading punt returner in all of college football. Stay away from him. And that was a low kick, too, a returnable. So here's Michigan with some great field position now. Quick throw to Amara Dabo. And Darbo is dropped there by Sitchi. And some talking going on on the field. I love Jack Sitchi's Sitchi. involved. He, he's a heck of a football player. He's not the biggest guy at 230 pounds, but he's an instinctive player. It's his first time getting an opportunity to start this season at inside linebacker. And he's learned from the Vince Beagles and the Joe Schoberts of the world. And he's an outstanding football player. Spate told us he's getting away from the trash talking. He's going the Andrew Luck route. When he gets hit by somebody, he's like, good hit, big boy. I appreciate that. Chris Evans had the first down. So we talked to Spate about that and how he handles getting everybody saw that Andrew Luck clip. And, and what was your advice to him, Grease? How, how did you go when you were well, playing in the NFL? Well, I made the mistake one time of telling Rodney Harrison after he hit me, you know, I threw a ball down the field. It was a great, a great play. And he hit me pretty hard and I said I was feeling myself. I said is that all you got. And then the next time he came in he got the best of me. So I told Will and I said listen don't say that. And of all people to Rodney I Harrison. Know, First down and ten now. Off the play fake. Spate looked like he took a hit before he delivered it to Darbo. And he's wrestled out of bounds by Sitchi. Greasy what were you thinking man. Well clearly I wasn't. <laughs> I think the Andrew Luck approach is a little more effective. Sometimes you just feel the moment, you know? <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Big hit there on TJ Watt. His helmet came off. So he has to come out of the game here. 
Second down situation, so both backup outside linebackers will be in the game. Zach Bond, a redshirt freshman, and Garrett Dooley. Timeout, Michigan, their second. As he was through this program. On second and eight, Kakoa Crawford is the ball carrier. Maybe got back to the line. Obasi got in the way again. That's the first time we've seen Kakoa Crawford with a rush in this game. True freshman, good size, 6'2", 200 pounds. Sometimes I think, you know, Jim Harbaugh puts these guys in just to kind of appease them, you know? Like, I wonder if coaches do that around college football and recruiting, they promise them things, you know? I'm gonna get you a couple snaps as a true freshman. And also it has to help put it on film for the other teams to study, give them more guys to worry about. Now Spade has big problems, able to shake a man off. T.J. Watt got to him. That's just impossible on Davion Smith. You can't block T.J. Watt with a running back. This is poor design here. I don't know if it was a bust or, but that's that's just going to be a sack waiting to happen. Davion Smith's one of the best protecting backs in all of college football, but he's not going to block T.J. Watt. That's an incomplete pass. In case you were questioning that, Wisconsin looked like they were going to pick it up and try to run that into the end zone. Here's Kenny Allen missing 31. This is from 43. Has he straightened things out? No. No good. Allen missing from 31 and now 43. And that keeps this game at 7 0. That was into the wind. Well, clearly his confidence is shaken. He's now missed four field goals on the season. And, you know, you wonder if Jim Harbaugh needs to, uh, to make a decision. You know, he's got one of the best kickers to recruit number one kicking recruit in the country last year and Quinn Norton on the roster I wonder if he'll make a change at that position Quinn, Quinn. Norton was the uh, recruit that he famously spent you know spent the night over his house yes that got that, quite that a got bit of attention that Quinn Norton you do what you got to do he didn't do all that for nothing satellite camps or spend the night in somebody's house Here's Wisconsin on first and 10 for the 25. Need a big offensive play. Hornibrook looking for the big offensive play. Overthrew Robert Wheelwright. And we send it back to Cassidy Hubbard. Cassidy, thank you. Hornerbrook is 0 for his last four. Well, in the last time, last three times he's thrown the ball deep, they've been on first down and they've been incomplete. That time he had real right open. He just overthrew him. They have not had the consistency and been on the same page in their deep passing game. I should remind you, Paul Chris, the head coach, does call the plays for Wisconsin. He called this play two on second and ten. It's a completion. But shy of the first down is Jazz P. You know, bring up a third down. Yeah, and Paul Chris, one of the few head coaches that still call their own plays. It's a, it's a challenge to be down on the field, manage the entirety of the game, manage the clock, fourth down situations, kicking game, all that, and call offensive plays. But Paul Chris says that's the way he's done it. He feels comfortable in it, and he's one of the better play callers in college football. Paul Johnson, Mike Leach, yep. David Beatty, those guys also. But you're right, it's a small number. He needs to call something now to beat man coverage because that's all he's getting from Michigan. Third and four. Hornibrook dumps it down for Wheelwright. He's got the first down and some running room. And that's a great play call from Paul Chris. As you get a little rub route in the middle of the field, take your X receiver and Wheelwright and just cross him with the tight end Fumagalli. It's a great call. It's a you know man beater 101 in football. And Wheelwright gets a big first down. And what a huge conversion. Prior to that play, they had 66 yards of total offense. They're only down seven points. You know, the two missed field goals have been huge. You get an opportunity if they can finish off this drive and get any points to play like they did in the first half and be down just a few points or be, to be tied would be a huge win. Second time all game that Wisconsin has been in Michigan territory, even if it's by a yard or two. Clement is stopped by Brian Monet. The problem, Todd, is 
ground. Wisconsin is unable to run the football so far under 30 yards on the ground. You got Corey Clement, you got Dario Gumbawale, either one of them. There's nowhere to run the ball. That's why Paul Chris is throwing on first down, but that's not Wisconsin. Second and 10 now. Radish the fullback in there in front of Clement. Look out. Feels the pressure. Couldn't hook up with Clement. But wow, Hornerbrook was blasted there. Don Brown says, I solve problems with aggression. <laughs> Not that fun. they have a problem right now, but he knows a redshirt freshman quarterback, second start on the road. He says, listen, I'm smarter than the quarterback. I'm going to come up with some kind of a scheme to get after you and hit you. They hit quarterback last week 23 times on the ground. It's amazing. We were told the goal is to hit the quarterback seven times in a game. That's three times your goal. I'd like to set my goals a little higher. <laughs> Third down and ten. Oh, couldn't handle the snap. Bit high. Hornerbrook's in trouble, and he'll just fall on it. Looked like the snap might have been a bit high. They do have Brett Connors filling in at center these days. Well, what happens, you go on the road, Steve, it's loud, it's third down, you're trying to make checks. Look at his eyes, he's looking downfield at the safety, and the center snaps the ball. But, Hornybrook did give him the signal to snap the football. You just have to know and have experience. Once I put my hand down, I've got to focus on the ball. Connor's a bit of a stopgap there at center. When Michael Dieter slid over from center last week. And they actually had worked out pretty well. Jim Harbaugh wanted a timeout there before the snap. Timeout, Michigan, their third and final timeout. 30-second timeout. Well, Harbaugh got that timeout in. Paul Chris on the other sideline was trying to get a timeout before the snap that was ultimately fumbled. He was giving it to the referee afterwards, letting him know that, hey, I was trying to get the timeout. What are you doing? And uh, no answer. This is P.J. Rosowski punting for Wisconsin now. They obviously weren't happy with the true freshman Anthony Lottie's punt and that was that punt. Shank. Although I think Paul Chris will take that over kicking it right down the middle of the field to Peppers. We're talking about struggling in the kicking game both teams here today. Take a look at today's Aflac trivia question. Prior to this season when was the last time Wisconsin defeated two AP top 10 teams in the same season. Here's a clue. Got to go a ways back. Oh boy. That's well, all I'm saying. Yeah, I saw you reading this earlier and judging by how long it took you to read the answer. <laughs> I'm going to say I probably don't know. Yeah. <laughs> What's your win percentage on Affleck trivia? It's pretty, I'm going to say they, they had to beat somebody in the Rose Bowl because that would have been the second top 10 team. I, I'm going to say that. That could be part of the answer. <laughs> we shall see. So Michigan with the football off the play fake. Spade throwing too high for Amaro Darbo. It'll go incomplete. Yeah, we talked with uh, Wilton Spate yesterday. He felt like in the CU game, he got hit with a blindside blitz. He fumbled. They picked it up and they ran it back for a touchdown. And he said, you know, at that point, my internal clock went down. I was getting rid of the ball too fast when I didn't have pressure. So last week against Penn State, he said, I wanted to hold on to the ball and try to make plays. And I think he's made a good adjustment. Doesn't hang on to the ball that time. Gives it to Chris Evans. T.J. Edwards makes the tackle for Wisconsin. They're trying to, you know, Wisconsin has all three timeouts left. They'd love to get this football back. Sure. They got to do something with it when they get it. But, but I also thought it was interesting. You know, his head coach, Jim Harbaugh, said, you know, I think he can have. He has the body structure of a of a Roethlisberger, of a Ben Roethlisberger. You know, he doesn't have the, the strength yet, but he wants him to get bigger in his legs and be that kind of guy that just knocks guys off of him. Spate again a little too tall for Grant Perry, and the defender looked like he slipped down. Was there contact there? There is a, a penalty flag. There's a flag in the offensive backfield. That's lofty praise to a guy like Ben Roethlisberger. No question. I, mean, I think the comparison is just the size. Obviously not at that point yet, but that's the kind of quarterback that uh, Jim Harbaugh wants. Let's get the call. There are two fouls on the offense. Illegal formation. 
more than four players in the backfield. Offense holding. Offense number four. Penalties decline. Fourth down. So Wisconsin will get the football back with all three timeouts. 2.22 left on the clock prior to halftime. And, and even a field goal, you know, even. You yeah. Know. Kenny Allen back to punt. He's missed two field goals. Wonder if that plays into your head and you're punting as well. And another penalty flag. False start. Offense. Number nine, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. You know, that's a good question, Steve. I, I don't know, you know, whether you know, there's not many kickers, punters that do both. And then when, when you do both, I don't know, maybe maybe it does affect you. I would you think so. Ball, yeah. you're, you're rattled by missing field goal attempts of 31 and 43. Then called on a, a clutch spot to punt the ball away, standing at your own 15. Maybe just take out your frustration on the uh, on the punt. Come on. Moved again. Enough with the laundry here. What's going on? I think it was Delano Hill that time. Full start. Offense number 44. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. You know, when a coach is that upset on the sideline, it's normally because he hears the defense calling out snaps, trying to draw guys off. Just a guess, but that's probably what uh, Harbaugh is upset about. That was Todd Geerling's, the head linesman, that physically helped Jim get back to the sideline. So fourth and 16. Now from his 10. Just got it away, Allen did. It's a heck of a punt. Maybe you're right, he took it out on the pigskin. <laughs> Wisconsin take the football over after the 56 yard punt. Aflac. Trivia question right. we asked. Last time Wisconsin defeated two AP top 10 teams in the same season. The answer is 1962. No 1962. Okay, great. Northwestern and Minnesota. There was had to be a Rose Bowl in there. Here, here's the kicker to that. So the Rose Bowl that season. Two Big Ten teams there, so no. USC Wisconsin, and in the end, the Trojans held on to win that game 42-37. Uh, so it could have been a third, right? So, sorry I didn't know that Northwestern and Minnesota were two teams ranked in the top ten. Come on, study up a little bit. Thanks. On first down and ten. And opportunity here. Jazz Peavy making something happen. Peavy was back for that punt, didn't get a chance, but he gets a chance there. Good call from Paul Chris. One of the other ways you can beat man coverage is with the jet sweep. Block down on those that are responsible for you in man coverage, and then get the ball in one of your playmakers' hands, Jazz Peavy. Nice start to this drive across the 35. Gain of 17 there. Again, all three timeouts remaining for Wisconsin. You're right, a field goal could mean an awful lot here. Warnerbrook will hand off to Corey Clement. Clement has stopped maybe a gain of one on the play. Clement's carried the football nine times so far for just 31 yards. Well, in Michigan now, they are very confident in Stribling and Jordan Lewis covering man-to-man -man downfield. So the rest of this defense, all nine guys, are now focused on the run game, and they are clamping down. Louisville Clemson with a top-10 showdown tonight. This one's been a tight one. The game last night was not close. Batted it in the midair and then falls. Ryan Glasgow got the hand up there. Glasgow's having down. a great game. I mean, he's nobody talks a lot about Ryan Glasgow because he's not flashy. He's solid. And you see there, one of the things young quarterbacks do is they telegraph throws. And not only can defensive backs read his eyes, but defensive linemen do as well. And Glasgow timed it perfect. Glasgow already has five tackles, half a sack, and that pass knocked down. Third and nine. Hornibrook throwing, and that's intercepted. You can see that coming a mile away. So too did Channing Stribling. As 
there's just no chance for Alex Hornibrook. And you hit him, you hit him, you hit him. And then this time he's got time and he forces his ball. Jang Stribling's in perfect position, just as they teach it. Mike Zordich, their defensive backs coach. When you're skilled like this, like this secondary is for Michigan, you can afford to play a trail technique because you're not worried about going downfield and knocking the ball away, and he was in great position for the interception. First turnover of the football game goes to Michigan. Spate checks it down to Davion Smith. And again, keep in mind, Michigan would love to have one or two of those timeouts back. Yep. They sped out of timeouts. And and you, got, you have a sense of urgency here. If you will Spate get the play call. Second and six. Some pressure from the outside. Spade avoids one. Can't avoid a second. Sitchi's going to bring him down. And that's TJ Edwards. He came through from the linebacker spot. Sack kills you in this situation. Well, they're obviously out of field goal range, but they'd love to get a little boost for Kenny Allen in the field goal department, too. Spade's going to throw on deep. Why not? Pass interference would be the call. There's another flag down at the 50 yard line. Back by the line of scrimmage. It's jostling between Chesson and the defender. It's a pretty clean first quarter, but here in the second. Yeah, a lot of laundry. Two fouls on the offense, illegal formation, offense, more than four players in the field, pass interference, offense, 15 yard penalty, repeat third down. The ball, the, ball the, ball was thrown, the ball was thrown so far inside, and that's a good call. It's thrown so far inside, he's trying to fight his way back in there. Shelton didn't have his hands on, on him at all. It's a good call by the official. Ball was coming back anyway. A look from our progressive pylon cam there. Decline these if I'm Paul Christ. Make a fourth down. Got another good look at Jim Harbaugh agitated on the sideline. That play was doomed from the start. You take a sack on second down, and then you're you're hurrying. You're just throwing that ball up, hoping that something good happens, and you get an offensive pass interference that's then declined. So Jim needs to you know, pipe down a little bit, just relax. Relax is probably not in his vocabulary. Yeah, probably. That's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he relaxes. Now the low kick from Kenny Allen. Take a bounce. See if they they're gonna wait. Sure, oh, they got it. They ran out the good, first half. Good idea. Think of everything down there. Halftime in Ann Arbor. But we'll see if either team can can mount an attack. Michigan has moved the football from time. The two relatively easy field goal misses yep. hurt them, and that's the biggest reason. We are at seven nothing to open up quarter number three. Well, it'll be interesting to see in the second half. Does Michigan continue to go with Kenny Allen, their senior kicker, after those two misses clearly shaken, or will they go to another kicker? They have a couple of options. Quinn Norton we talked about, but uh, Tice is also another option. Ryan Tice. Ryan Tice is a sophomore kicker, so we'll see. Michigan to get the football to open up this second half. First time since 1947 that Michigan and Wisconsin meet. Well, both are ranked in the AP top 10. Both came in 4-0. Both 1-0 in conference play. And the second half is underway. Michigan will take over. Out at the 25-yard line. We always hear about halftime adjustments in football, right? Well, let's see. Spate comes out throwing. 
And here's Todd McShay. I think the story of the first half is really Wisconsin's defense continually bailing out this football team. They're doing it without Vince Beagle, too, their star outside linebacker. So to come in with a new starter and a key position and play the way they have, 23 times Michigan had the ball in Wisconsin's area of the field, and they only came up with seven points in the first half. Pretty remarkable. That's an unbelievable stat. Here's Spate. Pocket starts to collapse around him, feeling some of the pressure and able to complete the pass. Graham Perry on the receiving end there. And we'll see. You talk about those adjustments. Certainly, Wisconsin made them quickly in that second quarter, getting after Michigan's offense. What does Jim Harbaugh have up his sleeve? There's one halftime adjustment for Jim Harbaugh. Glasses. Glasses. Hand off to Smith. Picks up a couple. He went in the locker room and went to school. Came out, ready to go. It's getting a little dark here as clouds rolling in. I really think whichever team runs the football establishes some kind of a physical running game and takes a little bit of pressure off the quarterback. Going to have a better chance of winning in the second half. Second and eight. Looks like the crowd is just settling in, too. Evans is stopped immediately by TJ Watt. <laughs> How's that audio? That came right into your living room. Watts oh. fired up. Now, have we seen that before, right? We've seen that kind of an energy before yes. from the Watt family. You know, he uh, he's an outstanding player, and, and he's grown in the position. You know what I've loved about it? He's embraced the comparison to his brother. Obviously, his brother, three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, but he hasn't shied away from it. He's really embraced it. There was some movement there. No flags as of now. Davion Smith out of the backfield. He is hit and hit hard by Garrett Dooley. Hey, you know, we, we had to have two dinners. We had a dinner at 4.30 p.m. and then another one at 8 because these guys eat so much. Right. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Wait till you get to be 50. The metabolism all changes. <laughs> Jazz Peavy on the fair catch. You know, Chris, I was wondering about that because when you have a player like Watt, you always talk about his family. You know, every time when you were playing growing up, they all want to go to your Hall of Fame father, right? Hey, Bob right. Greasy's kid. And so, you know, you mentioned that, that, that Watt appreciates the comparison. Did you like to mention every single time that you were on the field about your dad? Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, but you No, know, I didn't. <laughs> But at the same time, you know, I think it's a it's it's a resource. It's an opportunity for for TJ. You know, he says he calls and texts quite a bit. You know, he'll send some tape of, of his moves and we have a penalty. Illegal motion, offense, five yard penalty, replay fourth down. We're gonna get another uh, kick here, but just to finish that up, I I, I think. It's a, he says it's a great resource for me. I would be it would be a crying shame if I didn't at least use him and and send him some of my moves. And, hey, sure. what do you think about this or what do you think about that? And but he does say that the majority of their texts revolve around food. <laughs> you know, where, well, where should I eat? Understandable. You know? <laughs> but but in, in my position, you know, nine. I think there are nine different Michigan players who, whose fathers have played in the NFL. You know, and every time you got that little note. So here's Mo Hurst, his right. dad Maurice Hurst. Right. Strong player of the NFL. I was wondering, am I taking away from the college student by constantly mentioning the father? And, and you're the perfect guy to ask about that. So. Allen will try it again. Oh, man. That ball is not coming off his foot. Well. No punt. Takes a Wisconsin bounce. There's another flag down back at the 33 yard line. Boy, Kenny Allen is, is shook right now. Whether he's kicking field goals or punts, that ball, he almost missed that ball. It came off low and Knuckleball. Personal foul. Roughing the snapper. Defense. Number 93. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. There's a call you don't hear every day. Roughing the snapper. Yeah, they got to protect these snappers, you know, because you can't hit them immediately. That's Garrett Rand. He's a true freshman for Wisconsin. Right in the middle, obviously. You know that he's got his head up. You can't hit him immediately. And then we bring in Bill Lemonier. I mean, that's Bill. What did you think of that? 
the, the rules designed to protect yeah. him while he's down. Once he gets a chance to get his Head feet, up. he's up in position, then he's fair game. Wow, that's an iffy call there. I, I, I mean, I agree. You got to protect him when his head's down. But once he gets up in a blocking position, that's a huge penalty at midfield. No question. Michigan gets the football back and a chance to do something with Chris Evans. We'll take another look at that play. Watch the head of the snapper comes up. Now he's in a blocking position. It looks like he just tripped, and it made it look more egregious than it really was that he tripped and went backwards. Paul Chris got the short end of that call. As Michigan was turning the football over, giving Wisconsin the football back on the punt. Now they maintain possession after the penalty. Just over midfield, Bruce Spate with a hand in his face, able to complete, finds Chesson, and he's brought down at the 25-yard line. Garrett Dooley, but not before a gain of 24. And a rip bust in the coverage on the weak side. Just a little wheel route and looked like Dakota Dixon got caught number 14. He's playing safety. He's got to be out there. That was an easy throw for Wilton Spate. And now you have that penalty exacerbated by a busted coverage for Wisconsin. Chesu's fourth catch of the afternoon. New quarterback is Shane Morris in the game with Peppers. Well watch for that. That's Peppers in motion. Spate is out wide. Kakoa Crawford also in motion there. And Morris is going to turn the corner and keep it. Shane Morris, and there's a flag. So that's going to come back for holding. Yeah, they had uh, Bushel Beatty, the left tackle, out trying to block the corner. Holding. Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Bushel Beatty is the replacement for Grant Newsom, who was injured earlier. Right, and it was the same play Newsom got hurt on, right? He got he got hit low when he was out there on the left side, and so Bushel Beatty, who knows if he's thinking about that, because Tyndall went low, so he stays high this time and gets called for a hole. It's just that left arm with the takedown. Who knew that Derek Tyndall, the corner at 185 pounds, is getting the head of these left tackles? He's a game changer. <laughs> Seven nothing, Michigan. Number four in the nation, hosting number eight in the country. Try to find a seam, and it is intercepted. Wilton Spake turns it over. Intercepted. Derek Tindall, the man you were just talking about, truly is a game changer. And there are no flags. We give credit to Jack Sitchi, the linebacker. We talked about him earlier in the game. What a great athlete he is. He dives for this ball. We'll see him later with his left hand come in. Great anticipation and good ball skills from Tyndall. This is the kind of play that Wisconsin has made consistently when they've won games this year. LSU game, Michigan State, they have turned the ball over and made teams pay. Now the question is offensively, can they punch it in? We showed you earlier, Spade had not been picked off since his first throw of the first game until that play. Sitchi gets his hand on it. Tyndall a return of 46 yards. And they start with the best field position of the day, the 31-yard line of Michigan, trailing by seven. They stay on the ground with Corey Clement. They lean forward for a yard or two before Chris Wormley brings him down. Boy, you wonder, when are they going to get Fumagalli involved in the offense? You know, he's been their workhorse. So far, he only has one reception for seven yards in the game. But only thrown to one time, even. The offense needs to center around him. It's very difficult to run the ball between the tackles with Glasgow, Wormley. Get the ball to your best player, Fumagalli. Wisconsin knows they have little depth at wide receiver. Will Wright and Peavy, they've tried to get the ball to those players. And it is Peavy there. Brings up a third down and short. They've got to get some balance back in the offense. They came out running the football early in the game, and then by the second quarter, it's almost like they bailed on it. They can get creative, but they're also going to have to rely on Clement at some point to just make some plays. Well, the, the other thing, Todd, is in these third down situations, I love Dare Ogunbowale out of the backfield as a receiver. He's, he's dynamic. He can't be guarded by linebackers. Keep an eye on him in this third down. He stands to the left of Hornibrook. All out blitz look. 
Bringing pressure, quick throw by Hornibrook. Able to complete, you mentioned Fumagalli, there he is. First down, Wisconsin. Great idea by Alex Hornibrook. He had an all-out blitz. There's nobody left in the middle of the field. Identify it, get the ball out fast. They're all coming. You gotta throw an accurate ball, though. Perfectly thrown, good execution. We touched on it earlier, this point of the field especially. We talked about the Michigan issues kicking field goals. Hafiel Gaglianoni is out for the season. He's the star kicker for Wisconsin. It would be Andrew Endicott. But they're thinking seven and not three here. First player through is the fullback, Austin Ramish, and he gains maybe a yard on the play. The center of this offensive line for Wisconsin, Brett Connors, we've talked about. Ben Shaw, the right guard. They're getting thrown around. I mean, Wormley, Hurst, Monet, all of them are getting pressure in the backfield. There's nowhere to run the football. The only thing they've had success is on the perimeter. That's Endicott waiting for his opportunity. It's Fumagalli in the wing. And is out there right now as well on second and nine. Staring right under the pressure and throwing and completing. Daria Gunbowale, touchdown. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. He's too good of a weapon not to use him in the passing game. And you can talk all you want about Corey Clement and how he's the workhorse, but Dario Gumbawale adds a dimension to Wisconsin's offense and perfect play call and design in that part of the field. He isolates him on Ben Gideon, and Gideon just can't run with him. Andrew Endicott taking over for Gaglianoni. He missed an extra point last week. And that just squeezes through. 17-yard touchdown. And who's going to say no to these two schools? Michigan came in ranked fourth in the country. Why not them? And Wisconsin, I don't know if they're the biggest pleasant surprise, but they're among them at number eight in the nation. Certainly a surprise, and no surprise that this has been a low-scoring defensive battle, despite the fact Michigan came in averaging over 45 points a game. We knew that they had not played the toughest defenses in America. Wisconsin has been... Up to the task. Peppers is going to run it out of the end zone, and because of that, it takes a big hit. He got rocked down by Serge Tracy. Let's go back and take a look at that last touchdown. We talked about Dari Ogumbawale. He's matched up against Ben Gideon, the linebacker. That is a favorable matchup for Wisconsin. He's going to run the wheel route, but Alex Hornibrook has to get this, this loft on this throw Perfect. He's got to put it over Gideon's shoulder. Look, he's releasing that ball, expecting Ogumba Wale to be down by the three, four yard. That was as good as you can draw it up and as good as you can throw it. Those are the kinds of throws that Hornybrook made last week against Michigan State and will need to continue to do in this fourth quarter. All right, Wilton Spate, what do you have? Spate able to complete to J.U. Chesson. You know, Michigan, as you mentioned, they're scoring 45 at minimum every single game. They have faced very little in-game adversity. Right. And, and Jim Harbaugh knew this would be a tougher game. I don't believe he thought with seven and a half left in the third quarter, they'd be tied. Well, you know, we're going to find out, right? So, you know, they were down 21-7 in the, in the Colorado game. Uh, they need some adversity. They need to find out about this offense. Davion Smith breaks a tackle. Keeps on his feet. Strong running, Davion Smith, first down. Keeps posted Cassidy, thank you. Hand off again, and Smith, there's a flag. He's got a big gain, he's got a first down, and then some, some more hard running by Davion Smith. They're gonna get Bushel Beatty, the reserve left tackle, for another hold, and it's a good call. They run right by him. He gets that left arm out, and he's pulling on the jersey. He's gotta have more be more sound from a technical standpoint to keep those hands inside. Holding defense number 65. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That goes the other way against the nose guard, Olive Songapolu. See if we can see what uh, right here 
getting double teamed there. Boy. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. I did see the hold on Bushel Beatty, though. I know that. <laughs> so this can get away with one. Jeez. That's, that's a rough call. 18 yard run and then the 10 yard penalty. Right back to Smith. Not that time. He's dragged back by Jack Sitchie and company. Boy, Sitchie has made play after play. He got the tip on the interception. He's made plays on the perimeter, making plays inside the tackle box. They got to be really happy with the way that he has developed at that inside linebacker position. They need him. You know, obviously losing some leadership for Vince Beagle out in this game. But the core strength of this defense is their linebackers. You got when Beagle's healthy, I would put him up against any linebacker crew in America. Handoff. Second man through is Ty Isaac. Sitchi, the leading tackler for Wisconsin, coming in with just 23 tackles. So there's sort of two statements there and one. So they look happy to bring you the show tonight. On third down and three, it's Isaac. First down and then some. What a cut by Ty Isaac. There was nothing initially inside, nowhere for him to go. But watch this lateral cut to the outside. Todd, the big guy, 230 pounds, showing some versatility. And we saw Davion Smith as well, two, with two previous productive runs, had great vision and great cuts in the backfield. So the, they clearly, the Wolverines, have come out and said, you know, we're going to run the football and impose our will in the second half. And so far on this drive, it's working. Peppers and a Wildcat. Spate is split out top of your screen, the quarterback. So he's not going to throw it to him that time. It's Ty Isaac again, picking his holes. That last conversion was Michigan's, just their second third down conversion of the game. And Mason and got a first Cole. Down now. Yeah, Mason Cole trying to get, watch him come right off. He's going to get the seal block. They're starting to impose that will, as you said. He comes off on Song Apolu. Pushes him back. When you get that movement and a single block on the nose guard, you're going to be in business. Again, it's Peppers. I'm telling you, Grease, he's going to throw it to Spate one of these times. <laughs> Ty Isaac, the ball carrier. I think the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to keep it and run around the end. That's the first that thing yet. that's going to happen. This is an impressive drive, Steve. I mean, this, they obviously, I think they got a. a Gift-wrapped penalty on the hold on Song Apollo, but outside of that, they have run the ball almost exclusively this drive and started to impose their will up front. It's as if Michigan is finally fed up. Enough of this. And we're going to keep it on the ground. Like Damian Smith there bounces outside momentarily, won't get back to the line of scrimmage. So more good Wisconsin defense there. The problem is they've been down here before. They haven't been able to put it in the end zone consistently enough, and then they missed the two field goals. So Wisconsin defensively, they know, listen, we can give up all the yards we want. The only thing that matters to us is points. That's why they led all of college football last year, and that's why they're only giving up 11 points this year. This is a huge third down for Michigan. Third and six. Two tight ends to the right. That's Poggi in motion. Spate to throw. Under pressure. And Spate's going to go down. Sacked by Sitchi. Got some help as well. Malik James. They, they were running a man beater, Steve. They wanted to get the ball like this. The problem was that on the outside, they were playing zone coverage, Wisconsin was. So there's nowhere to go with this football. They have leverage on both crossing routes, and then they converge on Wilton Spate. Great play call from defensive coordinator Justin Wilcox. And here is Ryan Tice to attempt his first collegiate kick, replacing Kenny Allen. And Tice from 40. No good. No good. Third missed field goal attempt by the Wolverines today. We thought it was Wisconsin would have the issues with kicking field goals. This is a good adjustment from Paul Christ. Take a look. Stribling's been overplaying Pavey all day to the inside. Looking back at the quarterback, so they make a little adjustment and they call an out, an out uh, breaking route and missed opportunity. Chris is great at taking what your strength is, what you're good at, 
in Strickland's case, man-to-man -man coverage and looking back to the ball and making it a weakness. Back on the ground to Corey Clement. He's out to the 30. It'll bring up a third Clement, down. Jordan Lewis, Jordan Lewis the stop for Michigan. And that's just the 10th rush for Corey Clement. I get the feeling this game, I mean, it's going to be tight. And, and third downs are going to be critical. Red zone's going to be critical. And which special teams can not mess it up? You said it would be a fourth quarter game. And we're a minute 45 away from that fourth quarter. Third and three. To throw. Hornibrook hit as he released and can't connect. Trying to hit his fullback, Alec Ingold, out of the backfield. You start to wonder, Alex Hornibrook in the fourth quarter, are these hits going to start to take their toll? This time, Taco Charlton and Jabril Peppers. That hurts, folks. That guy comes down on top of you. you. Start to think about these things as you get later in the game, and they take their effect. And even more in the kicking game, right? Anthony Lottie started kicking for Wisconsin, the punting, and he was replaced after a couple of rough punts. P.J. Rosowski getting the opportunity. Got some pressure right up the middle, but able to get it away. And Peppers has it, and he'll drop it there. 7-7, minute 25 left here in quarter number three. Kicking game has been an issue. We'll leave it at that for now. Handoff and flags fly. Chris Evans, the ball carrier. I count three yellow handkerchiefs on the field. There's only three officials in there, the umpire, <laughs> center judge, and ref. Holding offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Boy, it's a killer. It's Did a you killer. just drop the center judge? Center judge. You mean yeah. Eric E. O. Oliver, our center judge today. There he is right here. They all saw it. Yep, good call. You know there's a center judge back, you know, where behind the uh, offensive uh, yep. line of scrimmage. That's where the CJ should be, yep. I think. The center judge. He's new. He's new back there. Just started a couple of years. <laughs> just making sure you know. Yep. First and 20 after they pick up all of the players. Here's Spate. Dumps it down for Jake Butt. It's been an eternity in between Butt receptions. <laughs> TJ Watt made the stop there. They need to get these two tight ends in the game. Fumagalli, we saw, contributed on the touchdown drive for Wisconsin, and we haven't called Jake Butt's name enough today. He's, he's a mismatch. He's only been targeted four times. And a screen is a great way to get him involved. An easy throw for the quarterback. Get back five off the penalty. There you see the numbers on the Michigan tight end and co-captain. Spate throwing deep. Good coverage that time. Wadda Amara Darbo. Musso was there on the cover. Yeah, Musso playing that deep safety. You're not going to fool Leo Musso. He may not be the biggest guy out there, the strongest guy, but he may be one of the smarter guys on this defense, and he diagnosed that play from the beginning. He's been all over the field. I mean, versus the run, he's come filling hard, making plays in the backfield. In the past, he's breaking early on throws. Really impressed with his play today. He's got a good coach, Todd. You know his name? Leonard. Jim Leonard. Former Jet great. <laughs> and an awesome 5'8 safety at that. <laughs> Here's Spate in trouble. And he is brought down. Who else? T.J. Watt. And that might have just been the final play of the third quarter. Third downs against either one of these defenses. If you're in long yardage situations, you're dead to rights. And this is a simple T.E. The tackle goes first and the end comes around. And T.J. Watt, you're not going to block him when he has that advantage. Michigan will punt it away, but there is a flag down as Kenny Allen got it away. Peavy up to the 39. And again, the flag will check it. Two flags back at the 15-yard line. Hold on, Michigan. Paul Chris, it looks like he wants to decline it, but I w I'd make Kenny Allen kick it again, wouldn't you? The way things have gone today? Yeah. Holding. 
Offense, number 31, 10 yard penalty. We added it into the play, first down. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can add that to the end of the run there, but I, with the way that Kenny Allen is, has been, his confidence been shook, I, I don't, I'm not so sure I wouldn't make him do it again. You look at Paul Christ and you know, I'm sure he gets recognized in Madison. I'm not sure where else in the country Paul Chris walked down the street and get recognized. And then there's Jim Harbaugh, who is yep. one of the most recognizable men in the country, and yet their records are exactly identical. Second year at their alma maters, and both have had tremendous success. Well, and, and both these guys are more alike than they are different. Externally, certainly, they are different, but when it comes to football and preparation, these families, the Chris family and the Harbaugh family, have known each other for 30 years, going back to George Christ, Paul's father, and Jack Harbaugh, Jim's father, who coached. And they have been friends as a family for a long time. A lot of respect. Here we go. Waterbrook will hand it off to Corey Clement. He's deep into Michigan territory now. A little bit of a wrinkle there from Paul Christ. Had a little bit of a jet sweep action, which finally opened up the middle of this defense. Watch Ben Gideon. Just a little bit of hesitation right there allows Ramchek to get up to the second level, and he's past McCray for a nice gain on first down. That was one of the knocks on Clement. Home run or nothing. That was a little closer to the home run. Big play there. He said to be helping. Hornibrook is tripped up. Maybe his foot got tangled up with his center, Brett Connors. And they're fortunate he was able to hang on to the football. Yeah, these I think it was his right guard, Benshaw. Watch right here. You gotta wow. get that foot out of there. Those guys are big guys up there. They gotta block, and that's why quarterbacks work on that footwork all the time. As a quarterback, you gotta get your feet away from center. Especially when you know they have a tough block ahead of them. So that's always on the quarterback. You see yeah. it from time to time. Yeah. Second and 13. Two tight ends. Steph is in with Fumagalli. Handed off to Clement. Stopped at the line by Matthew Godin. He, along with Glasgow, celebrated their birthdays yesterday. A couple of the gutter boys, as they call them, for the Wolverines up front. Yeah, these guys up front. You know, Godin, they've got nine guys that are going to rotate up there, and they're all trustworthy, dependable, tough players. Godin, great job there. Rashawn Gary, you know, the, the true freshman, the number one recruit in the country, is playing a significant amount of snaps now. He walked the right tackle back on that last play, so they keep them all fresh in the fourth quarter. They dominate. Third and ten. Too short. Alex Hornibrook skipped it in front of Peavy. Tyree Kittle had the cover. It'll be interesting to hear what Paul Chris decides to do. I think he's probably going to go for it here. He's, why not? I mean, well, now he's going to decide to punt it. But you know, last week they were six of six in third and ten plus, right? It's fourth and ten. Not so sure. They've got field goal questions as well when it comes to their kicker, Andrew Endicott. With their defense playing so well, he wants to just bunt it down here inside the 15. This is Anthony Lottie now back in the punt for Wisconsin. Peppers will let it go. Takes a Wisconsin bounce to stay in. Get a bye week and then the Ohio State. I mean, that's if they win that one, they might be number one. Handoff. Isaac nearly lost the football, regained it as the first down. So on a drive that starts from Michigan's own seven, they get the gain of 13. It's a breathing room. Wow. Great hold for Ty Isaac. But watch the ball. All security is going to be a big issue now. Tyrone Wheatley's the running back coach for Michigan and one of the best to ever play at Michigan. I guarantee you on the sideline right now, he's reminding all of his backs. It's a 7-7 game backed up inside our 20-yard line, and uh, Coach Wheat understands a turnover will be a killer. He's talking to him right now about it. Please reset the game clock to 12 minutes, 37 seconds. Had the uh, good fortune to play with Tyrone for a couple of years, and he's one of he's one of the, he was one of the fastest backs I ever played with. But you see how big he is in a good way. 
<laughs> of course. That's a compliment. I, I sure. got to make sure I clear that up because yeah. Ty will come after me after the game. I think he just made it worse, actually. <laughs> Eight different ball carriers for Michigan. Davion Smith carries it there. TJ Watt the stop. Todd McShay is a special guest on the field. Yeah, Todd Blackwood. Good to have you down here, man. Look, look who I found. So you you had the Washington Stanford game last night. Turned out to be a blowout. We didn't really expect that. What did you see from Washington that one? I saw them dominate the line of scrimmage. That was the most surprising thing in the game. I knew they had speed. I liked their quarterback, but they were dominant on both sides of the ball in the line of scrimmage. Jake, uh, Jake Browning, the quarterback, looked sharp. I mean, I, he, I guess the nation hasn't seen a lot from him. What did you get to know about him studying him and, and meeting with the coaches? Very similar to Kellen Moore, who played for Chris Peterson at Boise State. He's a guy who, who studies it. He's a great student of the game, loves to watch film, knows where he wants to go with the football, and very accurate. All right, so you got to see Washington, a great performance last night, and now you're watching Wisconsin and Michigan. What, what are you seeing in terms of similarities, differences? Well, both teams are, are not running the ball with great effectiveness. Right. Uh, the, the missed field goals for Michigan has kept Wisconsin in the ball game. And right now it almost feels like momentum is more on the side of Wisconsin because they've hung around, they've hung around, and Paul Chris very comfortable calling a game like this in the fourth quarter. It's hard with just one viewing, obviously, of both of the teams, or all three teams, but is there a comparison in terms of the size, speed, athleticism? Does is anything jump out? Well, the team I saw last night was very fast. They were very fast on both sides of the ball. They looked more explosive to me last night than either one of these teams right. today. But again, it's a different style game going on right now. Gotcha. Good seeing you. Glad you made thanks. it. Go enjoy your son. All right, I will. <laughs> Todd and Todd, thanks. Dakota Dixon made a big hit there on Amara Darbo to jar that ball loose. Michigan is 2 of 11 on third down conversions this afternoon. 11-15 left here in the fourth quarter. We're tied at seven. Leaves this stadium has been quiet for the last 30 minutes, but they realize now in the fourth quarter, their defense on the field, it's time to get loud. How do you keep it quiet with nearly 112,000 people in the building today? 111,846 on hand. 270th consecutive game here where they've had more than 100,000 fans in the building and you're right they haven't had a whole lot to cheer about well this defense they can cheer about that's certain, that's for certain sometimes you got to flip what your expectations are right it's not always going to be an offensive game 45 points they've gotten spoiled here the last month I'll say cheer for this defense second and eight now Hornibrook throwing in a double coverage was looking for Jazz Peavy. And again, the ball hung up just a little too long. Hill and Stribling were in the neighborhood. Let's give some credit to Delano Hill. You're going to see good coverage from Stribling, but watch Hill 44 come over. This situation, we've seen so many defenders get a penalty, right? You go high. This is textbook. Not with the head, the shoulder right in the chest. That's what they're trying to get these players to do. That is excellent by Delano Hill. You can't afford a targeting penalty in the fourth quarter of this situation. Alex Hornibrook just 7 of 19 for 86 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Play clock down to 5. 3. Just get it away. Hornibrook under pressure. Can't get out of it. You get in these situations, third down, Steve. You got to keep your wits about you. He's trying to get the ball to Fumagalli. He thinks he's under pressure, but there's enough space there to throw the ball to Fumagalli. It's not going to be perfect all the time. The guys aren't going to be wide open. You got to make that play. I give a lot of credit to these cornerbacks. Lewis, Stribling, all, really all game long, especially on that series, just locking down the wide receivers man to man. It's Lottie back to punt. And it's Peppers on the fair catch. I wonder if all those hits are starting to affect Tony Brook, right? You would think so. Cassidy, how come we got to rub it in? How many touchdowns are they going to have in our 7 7 game? Cassidy needs to begin to respect defense. 9.49 left here in the fourth. Michigan football now. Peppers gave it up to Chesson. 
And he has brought down some more fine defense. T.J. Edwards there, along with Sitchi making the stop. Wow, that's a risky play call. The Wisconsin defense, well coached. You're not going to fool these guys. Justin Wilcox, his first season as defensive coordinator, he came in and you know, he says, I built on the fundamentals. Dave Aranda is an outstanding defensive coordinator, and they got smart players. Wilcox knows better than to come in and change things, right? He said, I'm going to build on these fundamentals, and he has instilled a confidence in these guys. They're one of the better defenses in college football. Wilcox has been around the block four stops in the last 10 years. That pass is completed for the short game. Yeah, think about last December. He's fired after the Pac-12 championship game, right? They lose. They give up 41 points to Stanford and, and Clay Helton jettisons Justin Wilcox. And, and just so happens that Dave Aranda then is taking the job at LSU, and this opens up, and what an opportunity. Timing, right? Yeah. Speaking of opportunities, big third and seven here. You see what Spade has done on third down today. Not good. First empty set. Quick pass able to complete to Darbo. Into the secondary first down. He's into Wisconsin territory. First time they come out in an empty set and they get the isolation they want on Figaro on Darbo. And T.J. Watt from his defensive end outside linebacker position can't drop underneath that slam. Really Gain a 15 on the play. Really confident catch there too. Plucking that ball on the run with a defender there. Darbo's had some drops in recent weeks. That was a big time catch. On first down off the play fake. Spate looking for it. Has Darbo. Touchdown Michigan. Darbo has established himself as a go-to receiver for Michigan. Last year it was Chesson. This year Darbo has come on. He has been reliable. He runs great routes. He's strong. He catches a big third down and then gets behind the defense to break this game open. And nothing is guaranteed with a kicking game today. That's Ryan Tice who puts through the extra point. Tice now six for six on extra points. 14-7 Michigan. The quarter Bates deep accuracy is really a strength of his game, I'd say. I agree, Tom. Kenny Allen will kick it in the air. Goes out of the end zone. 7.56 to play here in the fourth quarter. Michigan has taken up a 14-7 lead over Wisconsin. So Michigan got their big play going on offense. What about the Badgers? You know, unfortunately, the Badgers don't have a Amara Darbo. And, and so Jazz Beebe is kind of their fastest guy downfield, but they haven't had any success there. So you don't need to panic. You got plenty of time. You got all three timeouts. You just need to operate your offense. Again, I go back to Fumagalli. You know, it's been tough running the ball between the tackles. First down, get the ball in Fumagalli's hands. Tough spot for the redshirt quarterback, Alex Horderbrook. Made the first start of his career a week ago. Scored a big win at Michigan State. But here finds himself trailing by seven. Eight minutes to play in the fourth. Starting out at the 25-yard line. Pitch to Corey Clement. Clement's taken down for a loss. Jordan Lewis, the tackle. We talk so much about Jordan Lewis as an All-American corner and his cover skills. Probably the best cover corner in America with Des King from Iowa. But look at him, physical tackling on the edge. That is a complete corner. Lewis making his season debut in the Penn State game. They needed him back, especially with the absence of Jeremy Clark. There's Clement now. Wisconsin has had just one possession of more than six plays this afternoon. That speaks just the seven points on the board. Yep, tough sled. It's not going to make it any easier on Alex Hornibrook. You know, sometimes his quarterback, the elements have the worst timing. It always rains in the movies, too. In the fourth <laughs> quarter, trailing by seven. 
drama. Young quarterback on the road, 111,000 people. Hoping you fail. Third and five. Hornibrook able to complete. Juggling, great catch, but it's not enough for the first down. Guess who again? Making a huge play, not to bat the ball and intercepting it, but Jordan Lewis on the tackle. If he doesn't get this tackle, Wheelwright gets a first down and a fresh set of downs. I mean, this is a huge play by Jordan Lewis. Wisconsin in punt formation now. They'll get it away with Lottie. Peppers will hang on. Careful though, there's Wisconsin has all three timeouts and there's only six minutes, so you got to run your offense here. You can't go into a shell. Come out with Ty Isaac as the tailback. Henry Poggi is the fullback. Two tight ends. Hand it off to Isaac, and he's dropped down after the big stop there by Dakota Dixon. Cassidy Hubbard. She's paying attention. She knows what time it is. Chris Evans, the ball carrier. Chris Evans with the ball. Sangapulu made the stop. Okay, so third down. You, you run first down, no gain. You run second down, gain of three, and now third and six. This is this is where in your back pocket you got to have that play on your call sheet that you've gone over with your quarterback and he feels comfortable with, and that you can execute because these are the game. These are the kinds of plays that win games right here. So the third down conversion rate not good today has been excellent in the first four games. Third and six. Under pressure. Spate is dropped. Garrett Dooley brought him down. And a huge defensive play by the Badgers. Yeah, and this is the substitute for Vince Beagle. It's Dooley off the edge. There's a miscommunication between the right tackle, Magnuson, and the back, Davion Smith. One of those two guys has to be responsible for the outside linebacker and give credit to Justin Wilcox with another 30 front look that confuses Michigan's protection. Fourth Badger sack of the afternoon. Kenny Allen will put it in the air. And it's Peavy from the 22. Jazz Peavy. Maybe gets a couple. 405 left after the 53 yard punt. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary now. Well, you said it. You know, those three missed field goals by Michigan. If this, uh, if they end up holding on, those guys, Kenny Allen and Tice, off the hook. They're those rooting hard. Are, yeah, they're cheering hard <laughs> on the defense. It's tough, man. It's tough when you lose your confidence, but uh, it's a lot easier to go through the next week if you exactly win. Exactly I was thinking, right? Don't check Twitter, oh, those guys. If Michigan comes up short. See what Alex Hornibrook has made up here. He's made up and handing it off to Corey Clement. Giddy in the stop. Tough spot for a young quarterback, freshman quarterback, making his second start. Under four minutes left, down seven. You can't hear it right this second, but once they get going up over the football, this place is erupting. It's going to be hard to check out of plays and do anything unless it's hand signals. It's going to be interesting to see how he responds, Hornibrook, to this moment. in East Lansing. He flinched for the first time in this game. Roll it, guys. You're going to see there's pressure. 
he took it took, could have taken one hitch and let that ball go to the wide receiver but he took another hitch and then he got hit and that's why the ball went high. He had no control over it after he got hit in the stomach and you know as a quarterback when you have indecision usually it leads to disaster. Both times Hornibrook's been picked off it has been Channing Stribling. And that's a tough spot. For the young quarterback. Michigan will take over. Chance for Harbaugh to squeeze some more air out of that football. Davion Smith. Yeah, yeah. Give credit to that defensive line for Michigan. Glasgow has had a whale of a game. Wisconsin just used their first time out. Second down and ten. After the timeout, here's Isaac. I think he'll stay in bounds, and he will. T.J. Watt able to bring him down. This game's not over here. You know, this third is, and six. Yeah, there's, there's they still have a timeout left for Wisconsin, and you know they get a stop here, call a timeout. There's going to be plenty of time left. The question is, you know, where is this offense for Wisconsin and Alex Hornibrook mentally to get back in this game? You know, last week against Michigan State. Their offense didn't have to win the game. It was their defense that scored the go-ahead, uh, the, the touchdown that, that took it from 13-7 to 27. This time it's all on their back. Defense can't help them out. Michigan, three for 13 on third downs. Wisconsin has just one timeout left. Ty Eisen. Ty Evans, I beg your pardon. And I'll tell you what, that, that's a educated crowd here at Michigan. How quiet were they to let the offense right. operate there in that spot? And Wisconsin uses their final timeout. They're going to get the ball back a little less than three minutes. Plenty of time. I mean, that's an eternity, even though you don't have timeouts. But right now on the sideline, Alex Hornibrook needs to be with Paul Chris, and they need to be talking about ways to get the ball out of his hand quickly you can't hold the ball against this front four even if they're just rushing four you have to get a little bit of momentum and the most important thing in that two minute drill is that first first down a couple of completions to tire out that defensive line for Michigan that's what I would be telling Hornybrook right now if you're a Michigan fan you're you're just worried about catching this punt and getting it off let's put it that way after that Michigan oh, State geez. game a year ago I'm not trying to just just a thought Wow. And here's another way to, to spark Wisconsin, make Hornerbrook's life a little easier. How about a big return by Jazz Peavy? How about a special teams play? Peavy's back. Kenny Allen, no problem there. And a fair catch for Peavy. Wisconsin will take over at their own eight after a 33 yard punt with 2.59 left. Well, and so we've, we've seen Fumagalli really has been taken away, whether it's been Delano Hill or Peppers, or zone from Michigan defensively. He's been taken away. Jazz Peavy, Wheelwright, one of those two guys needs to beat man coverage. You need to beat Jordan Lewis or beat Stribling. If you can't do that, it's going to be hard to move the ball right here in this two-minute drill. Like a really long putt, right? There's a lot of green there to go. And no timeouts to do it. Dari Ogumboele is the single setback. Hornibrook, Ogumboele, knocked out of bounds by who else? Jabril Peppers. It's interesting, Steve. Don Brown, defensive coordinator for Michigan. That's the first time I've seen him play zone coverage in this game. So on his two minute drill we always talk about the prevent defense right that's not who Don Brown is but in this situation backed up inside the 10 I don't totally disagree with it. you don't want to have a man coverage break one tackle and he goes 80. So after the completion no gain second and 10. Hornibrook throwing incomplete. Wheelwright couldn't take it off the turf. Third and ten would have been a defense they have played again without Vince Beagle, yep. their defensive leader. You got two downs here. You don't have to get it all in one shot. And again, no timeouts.
Finally, it's Fumagalli, and the ball comes out. Fourth and ten. Boy, I mean, you got to help. You got to help your quarterback, right? Wheelwright doesn't go down and get it. Fumagalli, it's in your hands. Who's going to help the, the quarterback? Because at the end of the day, everybody's going to look at the score 14 7 and blame Hornybrook. But Paul Chris knows you got to help the guy out. No question. And the center's getting beat like a drum right now. Brett Connors, he can't block last guy. So. But you got to overcome. Fourth and ten, here we go. Trailing by seven. No timeouts. Down the middle of the field. Intercepted. Jordan Lewis with your exclamation point. And very likely the dagger. You got George rushing out there on Jordan Lewis. And Lewis has made play after play in this game. We saw him in the running game. And if this isn't a sports center top 10 play, I don't know what is. Wow. And with the game on the line makes oh. that play. I mean, he's been just smothering these receivers all day long. They haven't thrown his way a whole lot. And that's why. I mean, this guy not only is he is he Velcro, as Don Brown would call it, on the receiver all day, but but he can make the play on the ball too. He's a special player. Jim Harbaugh is not alone when he breathes a sigh of relief. He's got some company from 111,000 people in the big house here today. Wisconsin cannot stop the clock, trailing by seven. Hand off. You know, we talked Maybe to Jordan Lewis last player. night. He's such a confident kid. Obviously, the, the skill jumps out at you when you watch him play. But what, else, what you get to see when you're around these kids and just having a conversation is their leadership. And he has taken over leadership here. Everybody talks about Peppers, Heisman this, Heisman that. This is this might be the best player on this team, who's number 26. And that's not taking anything away from Jabril Peppers. But Jordan Lewis is going to have a long career in the NFL. And the numbers on Hornibrook, I mean, they're ugly. There's no other way to spin that. 9 of 25. 88 yards, the one touchdown and three interceptions. But you're right, this does yep. not all fall on him. Nope. Too easy to blame the quarterback on most occasions. Michigan will take a timeout. Minute 28 left. But now you're going to need to go on the road because at Ohio State, at Michigan State, at Iowa, that's what you got coming up. Wisconsin has their bye coming up. Second down and eight. Smith the ball carrier Sitchi another stop bring up a third down but I did I did think it was interesting talking with both Tim Drevno and Don Brown last night that they said you know we're starting to put things together things are starting to gel we're having carryover from week to week in the learning at least defensively for Don Brown he said everybody is on the wave together we don't have one bust here or one bust there and 10 guys playing on the same wave. We have all 11 guys playing on that wave, and there's no question that Michigan is going to be tough to beat defensively if, if they continue to grow this way. See the clock winding down. Harbaugh and Michigan will use their second timeout, eat up as much of the clock as they can. 44 ticks remaining on the game clock. And, and this third and seven is upcoming. And learn from it as to how you can play as a team. Wisconsin needs a stop here to have any chance. And that should do it. That play took just enough time that now they don't have to run another play. And these two coaches, longtime friends, you know, respect each other to the end. Harbaugh said, you know, we respect each other, we love each other. We're going to try to gouge each other's eyes out for three hours, make no mistake. But a ton of respect between Paul Chris and Jim Harbaugh. How good are Kenny Allen and Ryan Tice feeling right about now? Michigan's going to hang on. 